Um, first of all, it was um, a huge privilege to actually win the, win the award, the overall award. Um, a huge surprise because we got to see lots of fantastic presentations. Um, and I think it just goes to show just a really simple idea, if you follow it through and, and follow your gut, you can somehow end up in front of 60 people feeling really nervous doing the presentation. Um, but hopefully, um, we're really proud of our project, um, and hopefully you'll get to understand it as we go through. Um, so first of all, it's a project uh, led by myself uh, and two ladies who unfortunately can't be here today called Emily Mulvaney and Kerry Ann Story. So just a bit of, a bit of background, uh, I'm an ODP who works in the trauma orthopaedic theatres at Nottingham University Hospitals. Uh, Emily Mulvaney uh, is the ward sister on one of the trauma orthopaedic wards and Kerry Ann Story is a deputy team leader in theatre recovery. So it's really key that we had three people um, that came together on the project who hadn't worked with each other before, didn't know each other before the project, but actually we needed the three key areas to all be uh, involved in it and have an equal say in the, how it was going to work. Um, so first of all, um, as Joseph Manning was saying this morning, Nottingham University Hospitals uh, is one of the busiest and biggest to keep trust in England. Um, and from an operating theatre point of view, um, since this slide was actually done, we've actually got four extra, so we've got 56 operating theatres uh, across uh, three sites. Um, I, work, I work in trauma orthopedic theatres, and of the 56, we have four of those, and that's where we trialled our project. Um, so within our theatres, uh, we operate on 800 necrophema patients, uh, which tend to be elderly patients. Um, plus a further 400 patients classed as elderly. And of the 800 necrophema patients, 34% sign a consent form 4. So that means that they're unable to consent themselves. So this is the patient group that we wanted to improve their theatre experience. So before we start the project, every adult patient was treated the same. So if you was a 30 year old, fit and healthy, you would come to theatre by yourself with the ward nurse. Um, you would wait in patient reception until theatres was ready. That could be a 10 minute wait, it could be a 40 minute wait, it could be over an hour depending on what was happening. But also if you was a 90 year old, severely confused, vulnerable adult, you were also treated exactly the same way. Um, and that is something that we didn't think was quite right and that's what we set about to change. So obviously that, that waiting environment, it can be really busy, unfamiliar um, and scary as I say. Um, and it can lead to an increase in anxiety and behavioural issues. It's obviously not good from a patient experience point of view, but also not good from an efficiency point of view as well. So what did we try and do? So we just tried to offer a more personalised care for this patient group. Um, and our really simple idea was actually just to follow the model uh, that the paediatric patient had. So when paediatrics come to fit, they come with mum or dad. Um, and again, while they're waiting, they get that reassurance, they get that familiar face. Um, and this was campaigned for in the 1960s, yet 60 years later, pretty much, vulnerable adults weren't given the same, um, same offerings in terms of uh, their experience. So we trialled this with three orthopaedic boards, four orthopaedic theatres and theatre recovery. And this is what we hoped it would achieve. So a reduction in patient anxiety uh, by offering better emotional support through reassurance. Um, and by doing that, we could have an increase in patient cooperation. There was also the chance that it could improve clinician communication. So sometimes if your elderly mum or dad was on the wards and they got seen by the doctors, you might not necessarily be there and you might not have those conversations with the doctors. So this was a, a kind of final port of call by them coming to the operating theatres. You can actually speak with either the consultant surgeon or the person that's going to be operating uh, on your loved one. Um, by coming to theatres, they get to see the numerous amount of theatre checks that we have to do before we do start anaesthetising an operator. And, and also by seeing, uh, meeting the team, we hope that that would give a, an increase in confidence actually you know, this person that's really dear to you is, is actually in good hands and we totally appreciate that you are really, really nervous, but hopefully by coming down and meeting us, we can just alleviate that touch. Um, 
And by keeping the patient calmer, we hope that there will be a reduction in post-op delirium when they wake up uh, post-surgery. So we had the idea about 18 months ago, and on the face of it, you kind of think, well, paediatrics get this, vulnerable adults don't. I can kind of see that this would definitely make a difference. But this is just me thinking that this would be a good idea. So I set about um, just trying to get some very, very simple data um, just by speaking with all of the consultant anesthetists within trauma orthopedic to say, I've got this idea, do you think this will be a good idea? Um, will it offer benefit? Um, what we didn't want to do was offer a benefit in one area, but actually it hinder the care or the experience in a different one. Um, and as you can see, hopefully from the graphs, um, we had a few people that were unsure, but generally the overwhelming feeling was that, yeah, this is a good idea. And it was, it was quite interesting because some of the feedback we got from consultant anesthetists was, was, why have we never done this before? It's such a simple idea where, you know, a 15-year-old can come with their mum and dad, yet a confused 85-year-old is not given the same, same treatment. Um, so this is where Emily and Kerry Ann uh, came to the party. Uh, so I knew that we needed um, a person from each step of the journey. So obviously the patient comes from the ward, they come to uh, the operating theatre, uh, post-op they go to theatre recovery while they wake up, make sure they're pain's under control and then back to the ward. So it's key that we have one person from each area um, to give their insight. Because I can't speak for what's going to work for theatre recovery or the wards because I just don't have that knowledge, I don't work there. So that was one of the key parts of the project. Um, as you can see, theatre recovery did their own snapshot data, just asking some of their own staff. And again, um, generally for, for the elderly and for our dementia patients, it was seen that there was um, going to be uh, a benefit for this patient group. Um, in terms of other people that we saw advice from, so we spoke to uh, Katie Moore, who was our head of patient and public involvement. So we were quite confident in what we were going to be doing with the, with the patients, but my main fear throughout the whole project was that we were going to lose a relative. Because in my head, quite simply, I thought, well, we'll have somebody come down and they'll come with their son or daughter. And then someone says, well, what if they come with their wife? Or their husband and they might be 80, 85 and, and what we're going to do with that. Um, so Katie Moore's insight in terms of what we have planned and and how we're we going to deal with this in terms of relatives was really really useful. Um, we spoke with uh, a lady who pioneered open war visiting at NUH about 10 years previous and actually our project was along the similar lines in terms of kind of breaking down the barriers and saying we're going to be open and honest about what we're doing and what we're offering and, and come and have a look if you want to. Um, and last of all we had uh, an academic consultant anaesthetist who came on board with regards to uh, independently reviewing the project as well. So we had some improvements um, which weren't expected so obviously we were looking at the patient experience and what, what was going to be improved through that um, but actually before we even started the project just by myself and, and Emily and Carrie Ann getting together. Um, it's funny when you get people with a bit of, bit of drive and want to make things better, what can be achieved? So we achieved these, which we didn't set out to do at the start before we even, even um, carried out the trial. So dedicated theatre recovery base for all consent form four patients. Um, dementia aids available. Um, and also, just by all of us getting together and speaking, it was found that Theatre Recovery didn't have, a, didn't have the patient about me document. So how can they get the patient back to their pre-op state if they don't know what it was to start off with? And just by us getting together, we kind of found a few holes in terms of uh, our pathway that we were offering. Um, obviously, like most people in here, we were, we were quite big on Twitter and it was all about communicating it and it was all about buying from, from the staff. Um, because this isn't something that the three of us could achieve, this was all about everybody coming together, communicating it um, on the ward and um, in a &E beforehand to say, look, this is available and if you want to stick around, you, as soon as your mum or dad goes to the ward, you haven't got to go home straight away if you don't want to. If you want to, if you want to stay around and come to theatre, we we again are being open and honest and, and throwing our doors open to you. 
Um, definitely a few challenges, um, and I'm sure most people have, have dealt with the top one straight away. It's well, we're not doing it because we don't do that, and we've never done it. Well, now we do because we've gone. Well, why don't we? Um, so that was definitely the biggest one. Um, communicating and highlighting again, it's a different way of working. Um, was a huge one, uh, and we actually got A and E involved towards the end of the project to say actually patient journey doesn't start on the ward, it starts the minute they get into hospital um, and you guys are the ones that see, see the relatives more than anyone um, and they was a massive help in terms of uh, communicating it for us. Um, as I say, I only work in theatres but actually this change is going to impact wards, theatres, recovery, potentially A&E as well um, and we were quite honest from the start, say, you know what, this might not work for everyone. We might get some people that come with their relative and it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't actually improve anything. But that's okay because we haven't made anything worse. But if there's a handful of patients that it does improve something for, then, then we'll take that and we'll be happy with it. Um, so our results, so we had a medical student um, who came in and did uh, direct observations and comparisons of patients with and without relatives. Uh, which were taken from the anaesthetic ring um, and then the medical student saw extensive verbal feedback from everybody involved so carers, anaesthetists, theatre team members, recovery, ward staff, uh, porters, patient escorts um, to get their feedback on it. We've just got a little bit of uh, just a snapshot of some of the feedback I'll just give you a second to read that. So where are we taking it from, from now? So. One of the things, one of the challenges that we had was because it's a trauma theatre and it's a trauma list that's ever changing. Um, and I totally appreciate relatives can't stay on the ward for an endless amount of time. People still have to go and go and work and look after children. So it's definitely been one of the biggest challenges is to say we're hoping this patient's going to be at 10 o'clock and actually it's at 7 o'clock at night and how that impacts um, upon patient but also impacts upon the relative and the relative's experience. So we actually expected in some way for, for the experience to show some negative experience because we were trying to be better but actually we were to a certain extent promising something that we couldn't necessarily um, set in stone. Um, obviously it's sometimes seen as an extra task by all members of, of the staff, um, it's an extra job. Um, that's how it's seen as by some people, even though people can see the benefit of it. Um, something that we are looking into is buzzer systems for relatives. So once they've come to the operating theatre and their, their relative uh, is being operated on, rather than going back to the ward and waiting for the phone call and being really nervous and everything that goes with your loved one uh, having an operation is, uh, can we have some kind of buzzer system where so they're still going to be nervous, but it might be slightly nice for them to go for a walk around the grounds, go and get a coffee, whatever it may do, and when we're ready for them to come back to the theatre, we can contact them through that. Um, and for, I think generally maybe the top one, uh, there has been a, there was a lower uptake than expected, and, and I think that's because, unfortunately, not all elderly patients have relatives that are going to be on the ward. Um, not everybody has a loved one that is going to be with them the whole time. Um, so it was a slightly uh, lower uptake than what we first thought. So this is what we're planning to do. So as I said, it was just implemented across four trauma theatres. So ideally it will go across uh, all theatres at any rate, so all 56. And again, this is, this is not a necessity. If, if a relative doesn't want to come, if they think that they're going to be really nervous and maybe get tearful, then they're under no obligation to come. This is just something to say, if you want to make use of the service, then this is something that we are offering. Um, and we think it's, it's, it's such a simple project. All we've done is really stole an idea from the paediatric pathway. Uh, and it can be easily replicated for a while. And I think the key point with the project is it didn't cost a penny. So all we've done is the three areas we've got together. We have a huge influence on each other in terms of um, the patient journey, yet we have never really spoke to each other properly. We never just sat down and had an hour and said, well, if you did this for us, that would make it really easy and that would make our life easier, which sounds crazy. 
But how many areas do you moan about, yet you don't actually sit down with them and, and say, well, how can we make this better then? So the whole project didn't cost one penny, it was just the three of us and then a few more people just banging our heads together and say, yeah, let's, let's just make this happen. Um, and one thing that we're really proud of is that um, it's now become a guideline uh, for the AAGBI, which is the Association of Anaesthetists for Great Britain and Ireland, uh, for the management of people with dementia. So we're quite proud that we actually we kind of beat them to it. We're ahead of the curve in terms of what we were trying to achieve. Um, and that is now um, a recommendation.